Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. We are here in the middle of the UK riding an Italian bike produced by the Chinese with a copy of a Japanese Kawasaki engine. I think that makes sense. But let me introduce you to the Moto Marini 6.5. We've got the Street and we've got the Scrambler. Now the so-called the 6.5 because in the 70s Moto Marini were famous for the 350 which was called the 3.5. So now we've got a 650 capacity bike, it makes sense for it to be a six and a half. And if you're unsure who Moto Marini are, they're really, they started off as an Italian manufacturer in the 30s. They were famous for producing bikes in the 60s and 70s. I'm old enough to remember when they started producing big V-twins in the 90s, which were really vicious, good fun big V-twins. And then by around 2010, they kind of went into and dwindled into nowhere. But they were bought over by a Chinese company in 2017, 2018, and now they're back Chinese owned using essentially CF650 water cooled parallel twin engines. Now, the CF650 water cooled parallel twin is essentially a copy of the Kawasaki ER6, which was made in 2006 ish. We'll go for 2006 ish. So, essentially, we have Italian design and flair with a proven parallel twin Kawasaki-ish engine in the middle of England. I think we've got that right. So let's go through what the bike is. Let's make it pretty simple. The big, big talking point, apart from the looks, which I personally find attractive, is price. So the street is 6699, the scrambler 6999. Now seven grand is a fair amount of money. If I found it in my glove box, I'd be happy, let's be right. But 7,000 pounds for a brand new, good looking bike in today's world, that's pretty impressive. And if you go through some of the specs, we've got a TFT dash, fully adjustable suspension, front and rear, quality Pirelli tires have not gone with something cheap. We've got Brembo brakes at the front, 18 inch front wheel, 17 inch back, standard ABS. We've even got Bluetooth connectivity and backlit switch gear. All these little details, that's not bad, is it really, for 7,000 pounds? Okay, they're using kind of old technology with the engine because that is essentially a 2006 kind of Kawasaki R6 engine. But Kawasaki didn't stop producing that engine because it was unreliable or rubbish. In fact, it was a brilliant engine. Those engines were raced around the Isle of Man and at the Northwest. They are bulletproof engines. That design works. It's just when you compare it to modern stuff like the MT-07 and Aprilia 660, they're lacking a little bit but they're not lacking in terms of reliability and fun. We've had the opportunity to ride both bikes today. It's been interesting to jump from one bike to the other and the conditions have been reasonable. There's no rider aids on these bikes apart from conventional ABS. So we've got no traction control, we've got no quick shifter, we've got no rider modes. You get on it, you press the starter button and away you go. That's pretty it, it's pretty basic. But when you've got around 60 horsepower, it's arguably that's all you really need. When we got out on the bikes, initial impressions were impressive. You've, it looks good, I think it looks good. It feels quality. The TFT dash is a nice finish to it. And you've got to keep remembering that this is a 7,000 pound bike. So then once moving, I thought, well, they must have saved money on the suspension. This is going to be horrendous, but they haven't. It's pretty basic, fully adjustable suspension, but I didn't come away from it thinking I need to change this or this needs to change. The ride is actually pretty impressive. If you ride the bike past its design parameters, you get to its limitations, you might want to tweak the suspension, but that's only when you're asking the bike to do something it doesn't want to do. And it's the same on both bikes. The handling is slightly different, even though the wheel sizes are the same. One spoke, one's non spoked but the wheel sizes are the same, but they use different tires and the wider bars on the Scrambler means and it feels that the Scrambler is a little lighter and it's a lighter to steer and it feels more fluid. So I actually prefer the handling and the feel of the Scrambler. In terms of power on the road, we run about 60 horsepower, which is what essentially the Kawasaki had back in its day. Um, so it's 61 horsepower and 54 newton meters of torque. And that's enough for the road. I was quite happy with that. It's enough to have fun with. The fueling is a little bit sharp off the bottom, which is exactly what it was back in the day. It was a little bit sharp off the bottom, but there's plenty of usable power and these can be restricted to be A2. When you ride these bikes like we have done today, 
in complete isolation, checking out your reflection in shop windows. I like them. I think they look good. I think the most Marini brand to me, because I'm an old boy, I remember it. And it has a certain kudos. It is a good brand. Okay, it's Chinese owned now, but it still has a little bit of kudos. The engine was always a good engine. I raced ER6 engines and I loved them. So I've got a soft spot for them. I know they're bulletproof and reliable and these should be the same because it's basically a copy of that. The handling works really well. The Brembo brakes work really well. Everything works really well. You come away from it going, this is gonna sell. This is gonna sell like hot cookies. This is gonna sell. But then you remember the competition. So Kawasaki's own Z650 is just over 7,000 pounds. Yamaha's uh, MT07, unbelievably fun, brilliant bike with better spec and more performance. Then you've got a Brilliant Tuono 660. Yes, way more expensive, but way more tech and way more attractive. So it's difficult because in isolation, I love them both. I think they're brilliant. They're really, really hard to fault. Seven grand, six and a half grand. I mean, what is that in today's world? Pretty impressive. It's only when you compare it to the competition do you realize it's lacking a little bit of engine and it's lacking a little bit of spec. But if you're not interested in any of that, and you're buying with your pounds and your wallet, then you're not gonna go far wrong, are you?